This is Twit. So last August, a new branch of open source code with Google's name on it appeared seemingly out of thin air. Uh, but when compiled, back then anyways, it created a command line. Uh, here we are nine months later. Someone finally decided to check back in on that mystery to see how far it's come. And what he found was the beginnings of an entirely new operating system. Very interesting stuff. Joining us is Kyle Bradshaw from hotfix.net uh, to talk about Google's Fuchsia OS. Welcome, Kyle. Hey, how's it going? It's going great. It's great to talk with you. You're, uh, this kind of blew up yesterday, so I imagine you've been having a lot of fun watching the ripples that it's been sending around uh, in the in the geekosphere. Uh, Fuchsia is really shrouded in mystery, except for the obvious fact that it's being developed in the open. Explain a little bit about what you understand Fuchsia to be based on your time with it. So uh, from what I can tell, uh, they're trying to get away from Linux that's the really big thing for them. They're trying to get away from that so they can have open licenses. But also to be able to do things that Android wasn't able to do. Like uh, the interface, it, it's hard to tell from what they've given us. But in reading through the documentation, they're wanting apps to be able to interact together. Or just have a, one synchronized experience. Or on the, on the main page even, they, you'll see that uh, that there'll be apps that'll talk to each other and make one unit that shows up on your home screen. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you, so um, now you mentioned moving away from Linux as being one of the reasons for this. Android has been kind of constantly embroiled in these in, in, entanglements with Linux and some licensing around that. And uh, so it actually would make a lot of sense for Google to try and move Android away from Linux and into something entirely new. Of course, that's, as you see here, if this would be the next step, that would be a ground, from the ground up rebuild of what we know of as Google's mobile operating system. Um, but you were able to run this on Android. How were you able to pull that off? So all of the apps that they have available right now are built on the Flutter framework. You can find that uh, flutter.io. They, it's an, it's a, app development framework but from Google that uses their Dart programming language to make apps for iOS and Android. And of course, they don't talk about it on their website, but you can see it from the Fuchsia documents that Flutter is also used for Fuchsia. So I was able to take one of the apps and I lucked out. That's the only one that has seemed to work so far build it for Android and make it come up right on my phone. It's, it was incredible. <laughs> well, you say it's not so much shrouded in mystery as it's shrouded in laziness because anyone who <laughs> right. could really just take the time. So how many man hours do you uh, estimate you've put into this so far? Uh, honestly, it's, it's not so much man hours. It, it took me, it took me two tries a, a couple weeks apart because they simplified things a little bit, but uh, it, once I got the, the hang of the Flutter framework, it just took finding the right piece and collecting it all together. But, and people don't want to take the time to do that, it seems like, you know? Which is, very, which is very interesting when you consider Google, the, the behemoth that it is developing a new OS that they haven't really explained why it exists, what it is, except for the fact that I think they spelled out somewhere, you know, it's, it could be applied to uh, smartphones, it could be applied to Internet of Things. So they made these little clues. But when you consider Android and just the market dominance that Android has, if this were to be replacing Android at some point, this would be a pretty darn big story. It's really kind of uh, amazing to me that like, like what brought you to find, to like check in on it again? Were you just like thinking about, about what you had heard from months ago and, and decided you'd dive right in and sure enough, it was easier than you thought it was going to be? Absolutely. I, I just, something about it just excites me and I come back to it every now and then check in on it, see what's going on. I, I'm, I'm so curious. I, I like being in on the next big thing yeah. when I can. So... <laughs> It looks like it still uses material design. Are, are those? Uh, it looks like are those apps that look like Google's cards? Um, I'm, it's hard to tell from the time being, but all of those things at the top are generated from a, 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 a text document, a JSON file that has just a description of what it what it what its title is going to be and what type of card it's going to be. So. 
like like you see up there, you'll see email or story alpha. Those those are just that's a view of an app. It's not necessarily just the app itself. Almost like a placeholder of sorts. Like if there were an app, this would be where the app oh. would be sandwiched in. Of course that, but I mean, it, it's, it's not, um, it, I, I liken it to home screen widgets Ah, uh, okay. where yeah. you get a small, a smaller view of the, the main content is something that's, you know, this is your home screen. Hey, I imagine with the interactivity that some of these could have, you could have like a, a to-do list that checks in with your email or checks in with uh, a text editor or who knows what. And, and based on some of the stuff, so Ron, Ron Amadio also over at Ars Technica, a uh, friend of the show who's been on a few times in the past, um, he's also kind of, you know, really dove in and saw that there's a lot of, it seems like the, it, it's built from the ground up with multitasking, at least at its heart, being able to kind of juggle tasks between these things that you're talking about. Can you explain a little bit about, about how that kind of works in the, in the user interface? Well, uh, it's not demonstrated very well right now. It, I, I should probably put, make a video of that, but you just take two of those cards and you just drag them together and it combines into one view, which is important because it's not something that Android does very well right now. Whereas your standard desktop computer, you, I have Skype open, I have my, I have my music open, I have Firefox all open at the same time and that's just A-OK, -okay. right. but you can't really do that on Android right now and that's a big limitation for them. So could someone theoretically uh, run this on an iPhone and what would it require to do that? Now that I haven't tried and I haven't heard anyone ask for that, but um, you I'm should just need a, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. You, you should just need a, a MacBook and uh, Xcode, I believe. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's okay. We welcome felines <laughs> on the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> you would just need an iPhone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Look, Admit it, the cat did all the work, right? Just yeah, admit right. It. Absolutely did. Absolutely did. <laughs> you, you were in your lab. You were like trying to think about the next thing you were going to accomplish. And suddenly the cat flies in, lands on the keyboard. And what do you know? Fuchsia's running. How did that happen? It's Beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, well, it's really cool stuff. So, uh, so kind of taking a step back a little bit, just uh, kind of your, your feelings, having kind of played around with the UI a little bit. Uh, what do you think Google's building here? I mean, they, they've given some clues. Do you do you really feel that at some point this could be the kind of thing that evolves into a replacement or Android? Or do you think this is maybe evolving into some sort of a, a user interface for, a, I don't know, a full desktop computer or IoT? What, what are your thoughts there? I believe the point is to be both. Because I've seen demonstrations where people try to build Fuchsia on a desktop environment and the interface looks exactly the same. Okay. So I really can't imagine that they that they're just targeting phones or tablets. They they got to reach out into a larger market. Yeah, well, it's challenge that windows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It's interesting to see this evolve and literally right before our eyes. Yet we're all so clue clueless as to what the end game is. Um, now you point out anyone can get this running on Android. I think you even posted the APK, right? Yes, yes, I did. That it actually uh, they shut down my Dropbox for a little bit because of so much traffic. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of all that traffic, I have to imagine this is. I don't know. Did you did you expect the amount of attention that you would get after posting this walkthrough of of, uh, of Fuchsia? Honestly, I got to give the credit to Ron. Uh, I was not expecting this to get big, but uh, I also was not expecting to get an email from Ars Technica. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> right on. Well, very cool stuff. I'm super um, super happy that you you went one step further than what most people are doing. You thought, hey, it's worth taking a second look because you certainly you certainly gave a lot of people very interesting insight into this new OS that Google's working on, still shrouded in mystery, uh, but there's a lot of curiosity around this and you were able to get a lot of people excited as a result of that. So Kyle Bradshaw, um, thanks for coming on today. Tell people where they can follow you online. Uh, you can follow me online uh, on Twitter at... Uh Aside on at Tesco, <laughs> sorry, Tesco. and uh, yeah, and just if I can just give one little thing, I would honestly suggest that you take a look at anybody who's listening. Take a look at the Flutter framework if you're interested in app development, because you'll be future proofing yourself. You'll be learning what's next rather than what's now. Do you uh, do you 
have a hunch that Google might be spreading a little bit more information about about this stuff at Google I.O. next week? Absolutely. I'm not so sure about Fuchsia, but there's definitely going to be a lot of future for Flutter this uh, next week. Awesome. All right. So anyone who's going to I.O. or even if you're not, because Google puts all those videos up on on their site and everything, uh, make sure and follow that. Mm -hmm. Great point there. Uh, thank you again, Kyle. This is a pleasure. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you so much. All right. Take, take care. care.